All right, guys, we're back live. We're back live, and in this video, we're going to discuss the frameworks. The frameworks you need to know as a Web3 developer. And of course, this is a live stream, and we're gonna do a Q&A at the end. We're gonna look at the Morales challenge as well. As you know, we have a weekly challenge each and, each and every week here on the channel where you have to build something using Morales. So stay until the end for that. If you're new here, you know that each and every week we do live video, live broadcast like this one, where we where we discuss different things about Morales, we do Q&A, we also talk about a specific topic. So in this video, we're going to discuss the topic of frameworks, which frameworks you have to learn as a Web3 developer, exactly which frameworks will help you to build UI fast and how you can do it as soon as possible, exactly which frameworks you can use in order to interact with the blockchain as easy as possible and as smooth as possible, and a lot of other things. I will keep an eye on the chat in case there's some issue with the sound again, but I think we're fixed now because we did have, this is the second take, we had some issues in the previous take. So on that note, if everything is working fine, I'm monitoring the chat. On that note, we are going into the presentation and then we're gonna go to Q&A and then other things. So first and foremost, we're gonna talk about the frameworks. Let's say you come into Web3, where do you start? What's your starting point? What kind of framework do you learn first? Because as a developer, you probably used to use frameworks. So the first framework you'll probably start experimenting with and probably start learning is Ethers. This is right now maybe the most popular one, the most bare bones framework you can use in order to speak to the blockchain. So Ethers, this is giving you a direct connection so a direct communication line to the blockchain. And it has its pros and cons. The pro is the fact that you get the data straight on. I mean, you get the data straight from the blockchain, straight from a so-called node. So all blockchain data originally will come from a so-called node because in crypto, we don't talk to servers like we do in Web2. So Web3 is more that you speak to a blockchain, but blockchain in itself is a bunch of servers. But some people confuse this. They think that they speak to some kind of magical unicorn or something. But at the end of the day, you speak to a blockchain, you speak to a server that runs the software that can give you the blockchain data, all right? So this is what a, a node is. A node, in this case, is a server. It is a machine that has all the blockchain data and it gets this data from other servers in the network. Because as you know, all cryptocurrencies, all blockchains are basically a network of the servers all speaking to each other peer to peer, syncing the blockchain data between each other. So you can connect straight to such a uh, node using something like Ethers.js. And of course, the question is, how do I pick a node? What kind of node is this? And how does it work? Well, when you're using Ethers.js, you normally don't need to care about this part, which node your server, your app connects to because this will be through the user wallet. So in most cases, this is handled by MetaMask, all right? So in most cases, when you're building something using Ethers.js, you connect your, you connect your user via MetaMask to your website. And MetaMask has a connection to a node automatically, all right? This is how it normally is that you use just MetaMask. Or if you want, you can also specify the RPC URL yourself, basically the URL of the node. You can do these two options. Now, the problem with specifying RPC URL directly is that now everyone can see the URL that you're using. And if you have, for example, this server that you run it yourself and you don't have proper rate limiting, or let's say you have an API key from somewhere. For example, you're using Morales RPC nodes, which you can use. We don't recommend you to put them in your front end because uh, then they're gonna use your requests. They're gonna use your rate limit basically. So this is something you want to avoid. Most often, if you have a website, you want to use the, the node that is provided by the wallet, which is by default, by the way. When you learn about Ethers.js, you learn to connect your user and you get the, the connection to the node automatically. Most often you don't even notice it. Now. The problem with Ethers.js is that up until now, we've only been discussing the front-end side of it. So Ethers.js, normally you would use it on the front-end in order to connect wallet, in order to speak to the blockchain, but of course you can also use it on the back-end because the problem with just connecting to the blockchain from the front-end is that you cannot achieve a lot of things. So normally you connect your user 
And what's next? Well, you need to get their assets. You need to get their ETH balance, Binance Chain balance, Matic balance, and so on and so forth. Then you need to figure out their NFTs. You need to figure out all kinds of other information. And this is impossible to do on the front end, all right? So on the front end, basically in the web app, it's impossible to do anything more than just do some simple, very primitive requests to the blockchain. Everything else you have to do on the back end, all right? Everything else you have to do on the back end. And this, for example, means that fetching NFTs, fetching tokens and all of this. So in your backend, you would normally be using some kind of uh, API. And API that can provide you most of the things is the Morales API. Whatever you need about the blockchain, about the items, about the different things, you can use Morales API if you run your own backend. And then what you have to do here is to figure out how do you establish a user session based on the wallet login so basically, in your backend, you will most likely have a database with all your users. Um, so that you need to create a session based on this wallet login. You need to figure that out. You need to verify signature in order to have basically a cookie that can establish a normal web session with your server based on wallet login and so on and so forth. And normally, you have to do this yourself. And this is something you have to figure out. But... It's also how Morales started. Actually, we, we had a project where we had to do all of this ourselves. And instead of doing this, you can just use the Morales SDK that does it for you. So an, an alternative way is to use the Morales SDK that will do this for you. Establish the session, create a user entry in your database, and then you can use the Morales backend as basically a full solution for this. That's one way of doing this. Another way of doing this is, like I say, you do something like this, where you have your own backend, you use the Morales API, then maybe you use Ethers.js in order to fetch all the data from the blockchain and, uh, and uh, index it yourself. Then maybe you have to use the graph in order to help you with the indexing. There are many different components you could use if you want to do it yourself, if you want to start with each and every detail by yourself. And uh, the whole idea with how we are thinking about this is that this is too low level. This is too nitty gritty details that all dApps need. And the whole idea with Morales is that you don't have to do this. Instead, it's very simple JavaScript SDK to do most of these things with Morales. So this is in terms of front end, what you are using on the front end. This is in terms of what you're using on the back end. And of course, there are many things that you can also simplify on the front end by implementing Morales SDK. So for example, the problem with Ethers is that it's only Ethereum and EVM-based blockchains. This is the problem with Ethers. What if you want to go to Solana? What if you want to go to other blockchains? Well, in most cases, you will have to start from scratch. Yeah, you will have to use another library and you will have to start from the beginning integrating these other blockchains into your, into your application. So this is why, in most cases, instead of Ethers.js, using Morales SDK simplifies your cross-chain capabilities a lot. So if you want cross-chain, then Morales SDK is better. Why? Because it sits on top of Ethers. So Morales SDK in turn sits on top of Ethers and it sits on other different frameworks or different other blockchains that ensures that your dApp works even if you go cross-chain, even if you want to have Elrond, Solana, and so on and so forth. So this is in terms of uh, front-end, back-end, and the different pieces of infrastructure that you can either build yourself, use some kind of API, or use an end-to-end -end platform like Morales. So that's number one. Number two has to do with UI. Because when we started with Morales, that was the big issue we saw many devs have, that we can simplify a lot of this, you know, backend, backend integration. But still, when we judged hackathons, we saw that it's difficult to build UI in crypto. Why? Because most UI libraries, they're not really meant for you to quickly get all the data, for you to quickly get all the data from an index solution like Morales, because Morales gives you, feeds you a lot of data. And um, most UI libraries, they were made to be built around something like Ethers. Because, like I told you, normally when you start developing, you learn Ethers.js. So the standard way before Morales was to basically then get some kind of UI library that can make this interaction easier, that you have hooks and components that can make your interaction with ethers easy. 
However, on top of ethers, like I told you in the past, Morales has built a more complete solution. So you have ethers, you have Solana, you have other, you have Elrond. And uh, on top of this, you have the different APIs like NFT API, you have token API, you have all kinds of other APIs. So that's why when we start to build Web3 UI kit, which you can find if you just Google Web3 UI kit, we've ensured that the UI kit, the, all the components, all the hooks, they're made to speak with this whole solution, with this whole Morales platform instead of just ethers. Because the problem with ethers, okay, I log in a user, but how do I display their NFTs in a collection? I, I cannot do it by default. In most cases, I cannot do it by default. In most cases, I have to figure out this myself. How to connect to some API, then build some kind of React uh, code around it, a component around it, then have a hook that populates that component and all of that. While with Web3, Web3 UI kit, we set out to solve that issue. The fact that in most UI, you just speak to the bare bones Ethers.js, which cannot even give you that much data. Uh, and th this is also what you see here. So for quick, quick UI in Web3, Web3 UI kit is your go-to. Now, there are also others. So for example, um, you have uh, Wagme. So Wagme is more speaking directly to the, to the Ethers library, like here. You see, you can basically specify your node, you can... Uh, you can connect to an account, but it's very, very bare bones. For example, this thing will not give you the NFTs. This thing will not give you the tokens. This thing will, will not give you the uh, the trades of an NFT and so forth. So that's that's one important thing as well, that we are welcoming contributions. We are really happy that this is becoming a nice open source community with Web3 UI kit. So if you are a Morales developer, you're very welcome to contribute to this open source project. And if you're completely new to open source, you should start sooner or later because open source is your resume. Basically, it's your CV in the space of development. So the sooner you start contributing to open source, the better. And uh, it's all about the fact that we make it easy. I mean, our whole dream here is to make everything plug and play, everything one line of code. That's the most important thing. And uh, of course, we're working day by day in order to improve it, in order to make it easy. This is in terms of web, the fact that you have front-end, you have back-end, and then you have UI elements. Next, you also have other platforms like Unity. So let's say you want to build a, a game. You want to build some kind of gaming experience. You could start from scratch and integrate everything. Integrate, for example, Ethereum, which is kind of like Ethers, but for C-sharp. Uh, you could in, you could build your own backend solution for this and so on and so forth, or you can just Google Ethereum Unity boilerplate. You find this, you open this, and here you have the full integrated demo project already done. So for Unity, I, rec I recommend this thing. Uh, so that's basically it in terms of the most important frameworks when you start. So of course you should try Ethers in order to understand how to speak directly to the blockchain. Uh, next, you should learn Morales SDK, which is on top of Ethers, and it, number one, gives you cross-chain. Number two, it connects to the Morales backend, which gives you the NFTs, the tokens, basically all the other data, which Ethers cannot give you because Ethers can only speak to the node. The node doesn't have a lot of information. Then, on top of this, you have the user management from Morales backend, so that when you log in with your wallet, you have a user session established. On top of that, you have the Web3 UI kit, which is a full UI library, fully integrated, that you can easily use to get things done quickly. And this is what I would recommend for starters. If you're starting, learn this few things, Ethers, Morales, and Web3 UI. Because it will really set you up for success in this. Now, in terms of other libraries, there are many other good libraries that are also very, very useful. Like, for example, uh, Wagme, if you want React just for... Uh, ethers, that's also an option, then you will also probably see a lot of other uh, libraries for different other blockchains. So let's say you want to build on Solana, you can find the Solana JavaScript uh, SDK as well. Let me show you here. Um, so Morales is building on top of Ethers and also on top of Solana Web3. Uh, 
Uh, but if you just want to go into Solana yourself and learn yourself, then this is the way. And you can learn a lot from, uh, from reading it and using it. And speaking about Solana, you know that our weekly challenge this week was to build something using Solana. And that's what we're going to go into here very, very soon as well. Uh, as we do have some nice, some nice uh, contributions. And as you know, we are giving away NFTs each and every week in our, uh, let me find them, NFT contents. Each and every week in our challenge, we are giving away the NFTs. Need to ask Phil <laughs> which one it is that we're giving away today. Uh, and these are the Morales major NFTs that we're giving away to the winners of the weekly content each and every week. And then we're gonna go to Q&A. So while I'm waiting for, uh, for Phil, let me check the chat. I want to run machine physical monitor using NFT for operation of the motor. Physical motor using NFT, I don't know, salt. Uh, NFTs are digital, you know, they're, they're, it's for digital things. For physical, maybe you can connect it to the physical world. Uh, yes, today we are giving away the Morales Meta Versatile. And next week, waiting for the link from Phil, uh, next week is going to be another one. So the, the next weekly challenge is, is going to be about another one. I see he's writing. It's coming soon. Now, in terms of the features, we're going to go into the Morales updates as well, in terms of new features. As we do have a very, very important feature coming out very soon, which has to do with uh, the UI of the admin. That's the most important thing. And by the way, guys, good that you find this stream because we had to restart it. So it's good that YouTube still shows this one because we had some issues uh, with the sound in the first one. So we restarted it. Uh, Waiting for Phil for the, NF for the NFC. In the meanwhile, we could take some Q&A. Any questions about Morales, we can, uh, we can answer. Exactly, Morales Metaverse style. John, we're soon going to go into the projects that you guys have sent in. Or actually, we can do it... We can do it already. Uh, no, sorry. Okay, there you go. There... Okay, so this week is Morales Versatile. Next week is Morales Misfortune. <laughs> Why did we... Probably bought the top. Bought the top and got wrecked. And this week we have Morales Versatile. A front-end legend using... A front-end legend, the Morales Versatile is the star of the show. Born to rock the metaverse. The meta versatile is a legend of the strings and also with integers. Master formalities are known to emanate from the Morales Mage. Exactly. Okay, guys, the first submission for our weekly challenge comes from I am rich, full black. Let's see. Gonna make this bigger. Okay, so he's showing a Discord server uh, where he is alone, basically, or he has some bot. All right, let's see. Ah, I think I know where it's heading. You need to have some NFT to... Ah, let's see. Okay, so here you can verify NFTs to grant. Ah, so it's Discord bot where you need to hold specific Solana NFTs in order to get access. So you log in uh, with your Solana wallet using Morales, one line of code. You see all of your NFTs. You verify your NFT. It says verified. Fantastic, very nice UI by the way. And then there you go, verified users. Wow, I love this. Why? Because it's a clear use case. It's an amazing clear use case that is needed. You know, in crypto, why do we have NFTs? I mean, in most cases, it's to have access. Access to the different things, access to communities. So this is fantastic. And with Solana, it's so simple. With our API, it's, it's just a few lines of code. To verify the ownership, to then change the Discord bot to allow the user in a particular, in a particular uh, room. So yeah, it's fantastic. 
Ivan, can I run socket IO on a Morali server? No, so you can use live query, which is socket IO. Uh, check check live query, which is live query is built on top of socket IO. If you need sockets, live query is your uh, is your solution. Wow, I'm very impressed with this first one. I am rich. This is amazing because it's a clear use case. And guys, if you are participating in this weekly uh, weekly challenges and you do something that is a clear use case, it's full end to end use case. It's amazing. And here we do have such an application, which is end-to-end. -end. It's end-to-end -end that you can actually use it. This can be used in production, almost. Now, John Versus has submitted basically a portfolio, I think. Let's see. Let's play. This DAP user can check if the NFT metadata is trustable or not. Okay, very interesting. Let's see. By showing the user if the metadata is the central, central. Ah, nice. Ah, wow, that's very nice. So, you know, a lot of NFTs, they have their metadata on centralized servers. And this application basically shows you that a particular NFT has metadata either on a decentralized storage like Rweave or IPFS or on centralized storage like just a link to some server. By entering wallet address, user can check. Yeah, this is very nice. So basically, for each of your NFTs, you get this grading. And if the user finds the NFTs as trustable, ah, see, this is nice. So basically, before buying an NFT, you can come here and the user can check and see on any. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Wow. This, is, this works on Solana. This works on Ethereum. Amazing. I love that both of <coughs> both of these are end-to-end -end use cases also because it is an end-to-end -end use case. Fantastic, great work, John. So yes, you can use live query with Morales. So go to the docs and check live query in docs.morales.io. You will find it. Wow, I, I think that this is fantastic too. Th th these are the two that got submitted today. So number one was the Discord one. Let me show it to you again. Very impressive submissions, guys. Great work. So the first one was with Discord, where you basically join a server. You, the bot asks you to start verification. You come to the site. The site asks you to log in with your wallet, and you see all your NFTs. And then, based on that, you get access to another channel in the Discord server to verified users. Very nice. So this was number one from I'm Rich, and then number two was from John Versus which was that you can take any NFT, you can enter the URL, and then you can see if the metadata is centralized or decentralized. Very important. Quality assurance. So you can assure quality before buying an NFT. And as you know, we are going to vote who will win. So Krashimir will set up voting here. So all of you guys who are watching this, go right now to weekly challenge and start voting. Vote number one, click here if you are for I'm rich. Or number two, John versus. So let me vote for both. So you know how it works. So if you want to vote number one, click here. Vote number two, click there. So go right now and start voting. Now, another important thing that we have to clarify is that unfortunately, our Discord server was hit with scammers. It was hit with scammers yesterday and today morning. Uh, basically, we had over a thousand accounts over 1,000 accounts joined our Discord server and started to DM uh, different uh, participants of our server and uh, trying to sell them a fake Morales token, which doesn't exist. So this is why I want to clarify that we don't have any token. And ideally, you should disable DMs. If you're using Discord, disable random direct messages. You should do it as soon as possible. Because all of us are human. And of course, when you're thinking about that, you know, some people get uh, scammed and it's like, you know, how, how can you get scammed? <laughs> it's, a, it's some, some random account is writing, but it's easy to make that mistake because the scammers know that you now it, uh, it works. So they do it. So it happens and it can happen to anyone. So to protect yourself, I recommend you to disable DMs in Discord as just a general rule, because why do you want DMs from random people? Disable them so they, nobody can write to you except your friends. 
So that's important. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Crypto is what crypto is. It's horrible. It's uh, so many scams. It's uh, the, the bad part about crypto is the fact that too many people are here to scam. It's crazy. And that's, that's maybe the most horrible side of crypto. If, ever since I started crypto, there were always, you know, this scam element. And I find this horrible with crypto. There are many great things with crypto. I mean, most of the things, of course, are great in crypto. That's why we're here each and every day. But some things like the scammers, they are so horrible. And it's worldwide, of course. So it's very easy to get started as a scammer in the space. <laughs> you know, there are, there are a lot of people that uh, get scammed each and every day in many different ways. Phishing being b the biggest way. And uh, it's it's been here for ages. It's all about you yourself protecting yourself and educating yourself and being being aware of the different types of scams so people that have been in crypto for maybe two years you all know about this dm scam so this is why it's uh, it's important that you educate yourself maybe google crypto scams just google crypto scams you, you get an idea for you know different scams because if you've been in crypto for quite some time you've seen this dm scam quite some quite a lot yeah that's important ivan I've been scammed for 30k. Yeah, I hope that uh, you you weren't scammed right now. Like you, you were scammed in the past. I hope you. Uh, and due to this, I changed my entire career. Yeah, exactly, exactly. To to blockchain developers. So yeah, uh, I hope that the scammer in our Discord did not scam <laughs> for that much because it's. Uh, but yeah, you say that probably it was a, a while ago because it's, you say that you changed your career to blockchain developer. Please explain. Am I on the right journey? Well, I think for sure you're on the right journey. Is it's. Fantastic to be in crypto and fantastic to be a blockchain developer because you're really top 1% in the world at something. That's very important. Uh, it's not that crypto is full of scams. Not enough people understand development every time. Uh, but don't understand. Yeah, but p normal people will not understand code. It's just that in crypto, we need better wallets. We need wallets that show people what they're doing. So if you're sending some money, it, it, it should be clear. The problem, here's the problem with, uh, uh, with that, you know, that we have smart contracts in crypto. So when you have a wallet, you can interact with a smart contract. And smart contract is a piece of code that then runs. It's a piece of code. And then it executes different instructions and then it decides what happens with the money. So many people call scams to phishing. So for example, there was a very, very dirty phishing attack on the Board Ape holder, holders, Board Ape holder community. Uh, basically, what happened was that they made a website, the scammers, where they said, if you log in with your wallet, we will animate your Board Ape. We will bring it to life. Basically, instead of being static, your NFT is board ape is static, it will now be animated. Right? We will enhance your board ape. And of course, when you connect your wallet, they steal your ape. <laughs> because when you connect your wallet, you sign transaction that sends the ape to them. It's kind of like when I was a kid, I played RuneScape, this game. And I swear, exactly the same scam was working when I was 10 years old and people tried to steal my items in the game because they said, hey, Ivan, give me your shield. I'm going to add a gold gold uh, tuning to it. It happened all the time. I, these scammers, they, they say, hey, give me your shield or give me your sword. I will make it golden. Okay? And uh, it's crazy that these scams from games that I saw when I was playing as a kid, it's exactly the same in real life. This, and also, when I was a kid, it's exactly the same scam with uh, double your money. I swear, in RuneScape, there was, there, were, there was also so, so always someone multiplying your money. So in this online game, you come and you see some dude saying, I will multiply your money. Give me your money, I give you double back. So what happened is that people tried. They gave them 100 gold, gold pieces, 100 GP, and then he gives you back 200. And then people think, works. The next time you send 5,000 GPs, you get back 10,000. It works. Next time you send in a million, it never comes back. <laughs> it never comes back. So that's that, that's like it is in crypto, you know. But in crypto, they don't even give you back anything. They just tell you, hey, send me one Bitcoin and send you two back. You send and you never get it back. All right. 
Uh, but look, here's the problem with wallets. Here's why, really, it's very difficult to build a wallet that will tell you what will happen to your stuff at the end of a transaction. Because it's an unsolved problem in the computer space, in the computer industry. It is called the halting, the halting problem. You can Google it. It basically means that when you get a piece of code, when you look at a piece of code, you don't know when it's going to stop. You don't know. It's impossible to know what the end result will be. It's impossible to know, to predict for how long it will be running, and so on and so forth. So in general, it's basically an unsolved problem. You know, we don't know for how long a piece of code will run and what the end result of that will be. When you interact with a smart contract, by default, you're running a piece of code. And mathematically, it's impossible to say where it will stop. The only thing we can say, the only thing we can say, is that based on the gas limit, because there is a gas limit in an Ethereum transaction, the only thing we can say is that it potentially will run out of gas, basically be reverted. Okay? And then, of course, we could try to follow the steps, but it can also be unknowns. I mean, for example, if it's using an oracle, if it's fetching data from the real world, so to speak, and puts into a blockchain, you cannot predict anything. You cannot predict for how long it will be running because an answer from an oracle may prolong some kind of loop or some kind of operation. So this is a big problem in, in crypto. Does it mean that we cannot improve the experience at all? No, we can still improve. Because in most cases, in most cases, the software is quite simple. So in most cases, it should be possible to say what the end result will be. In most cases. Not in all cases. There are many cases where you cannot say how a certain smart contract will, what, what will happen at the end of the execution. But in most cases, it should be possible. Because in most cases, it's very simple. You know, you send this to this and that's it. So this is a con of Turing completeness. All right? So Turing completeness means that you and I can, can write any kind of computation. We can express any kind of program, any kind of computation that we can think of. So if you have a programming language that is Turing complete, such as Solidity, it means that there is no restrictions. There are no restrictions. So of course, it's good because you can program whatever you want. It's a very powerful language. But Turing completeness also means that you have the halting problem. You don't know always what the end result of a particular computation will be. So that's why some languages, like Bitcoin, for example, they don't have Turing complete because they want more predictability happening. Okay. Hi, Ivan. My team and I are planning to launch an NFT project, but I hear some people are saying that NFTs is just another form of Ponzi scheme. What's your opinion about this? Well, NFTs are just an, an asset. Right, it's an asset. You sell an asset. It all depends what you make it. Many people call Ponzi scheme. They don't even know what a Ponzi scheme is. A Ponzi scheme is when you take someone's money in order to pay the previous investor. So I promise you, let's say I promise you that I'm gonna pay you 10% per year if you give me your money. Give me your money. I pay you 10% per year. How do I get that 10%? Well, I tell this other guy that I will give him 10% also. So he gives me my money. I use his money to pay you 10%. Okay. Now, I have promised this guy 10%. I need to find another guy to pay his 10%. So this is Ponzi, all right? This is Ponzi. If you sell an asset, it's not a Ponzi. Okay. People don't know what a Ponzi is. If, if, you, if you say, if you buy my NFT, here's how, you, how it would be a Ponzi. If you say, buy my NFT, you're going to get 10% per year. And then you tell that guy, hey, buy my NFT, you're going to get also 10%. And then you take his money, you give to the first guy. That's a Ponzi. All right, that's a Ponzi. Now, many people call Ponzi schemes because something is very hyped and people pump up the price. Is it a Ponzi scheme? It's not a Ponzi scheme. Can it be a scam? It can be a pump and dump. A pump and dump is still a fraud, still a type of fraud, where some kind of value of a worthless asset is being inflated only to get sold at the top. Okay, and everyone who buys gets wrecked. It's, it's another type of fraud. So look, it's all about what you make it. I mean, if you make your, an NFT and you start pumping the price to get people to buy it and then you dump, it's a fraud. It's, it's, it's a pump and dump. 
If you make an NFT, you sell it, you promise people 10%, then you sell to another guy, you promise him 10%, you take his money, give to the first guy, it's a Ponzi scheme. If you sell an NFT, it's just art, and you don't promise anyone anything, you just sell them, it's not, it's you just sold some digital merch, basically. You sold some digital merch. Is it a fraud? It's a Ponzi scheme? It's not. It's a digital merch. It might have some utility. You may use it in some kind of game or something. So, yeah, it's, uh, that's how it is. Hey, hey, Remy, you gotta be very careful in the chat. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, guys. B be respectful in the chat. Sorry, we, we have zero tolerance. Don't, don't make any assumptions where the scammers are from. Because they can be from any... Yeah, be respectful in the chat, actually. It's very important. Uh, how does your NFT index work? Is it only NFT your users give you? Or we scan the entire blockchain, exactly. We scan the entire blockchain. And uh, as soon as we see a transaction which has the signature of an NFT, and you can see it by the logs in the blockchain, you, you, can, you can study the logs and you can find it. You can see which kind, which kind of, um, which kind of transaction it is, and which kind of transfer it is, and then you see it's an NFC, you can index it. That's how it is. Uh, how old is Morales? Well, we are more than a year now. So we started theoretically in February last year, but yeah, now we're over, over a year. End goal with the company. Well, the end goal is that we want to build the best Web3 workflow in the world. The, it, because it's so easy to get to technical. We can get technical and we can say, hey, yeah, you know, it's SDK and it's back in infrastructure. But all of that is secondary. At the, at the end of the day, the number one thing that Morales does is workflow. How do we ensure that Web3 development workflow is easy? If you have an idea, what's your workflow? So you can easily make it. What's your workflow for front, front end? What's your workflow for back end? What's your workflow for contracts? So this is something that really took ourselves quite some time to crystallize. How do we explain what Morales is? Because Morales can be explained as an SDK. It can be explained as backend as a service. It can be explained as uh, middleware. It can be explained as 15 other things. But all of them are too technical and all of them are too like detailed nitty gritty. And yes, it's, it's all of that. It's all of that. But on the high level, on the non-technical, high, big picture level, what, what is it? It's workflow. And I love that we found that, the, the way to explain it as workflow, because it gives ourselves a lot of clarity that, hey, it's workflow. The thing we care about is workflow. That you start a project, okay. And that's why we have, we have so many updates, guys, when it comes to the UI and how the dashboard looks like. But let's say you start a project, you can invite your front-end guys, your back-end guys and girls, you invite everyone, you invite the smart contract developers, you have deployment pipeline. I mean, we have so, so, mu so much in store there because at the end of the day, it's workflow. It's wor workflow. And of course, part of that is to make it as easy as possible, to make Web3 as easy as Web2, but everything is just a simple JavaScript. But it's also part of the workflow that you use nice JavaScript SDK like Morales instead of building your own backend for indexing. Part of the workflow. Yeah, so I hope that makes sense. Hey, I'm 14 years old. I love Morales. I'm currently a master in building dApps. Ah, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Very, very nice. Morales, holy great. <laughs> David, thanks for that. So the winner, guys, the winner of our weekly challenge is I am rich. Big, big shout out to you. I see now the, the voting has been very clear in our Discord. So once again, big shout out to the winner. I, I love this application. I love it. You log in, uh, you join Discord, you start verification, you get to a website where you can log in with Morales on Solana. The website gets all of your NFTs and then it tells, it tells the backend server to allow the Discord bot to give you permission to this channel. So big shout out. Very, very big shout out to I'm Rich. Fantastic. Any plans to create a package like React and Morales for Vue? Uh, yes. I mean, the, the answer is yes. We have a bit too much on our plate. Um, so that's where if you 
are a view developer and you want to be part of open source communities, it would be perfect to start such a, such a project. And we will do it ourselves sooner or later. But right now it's a bit too much uh, of, uh, uh, too, too much for us to do React and Vue, uh, but we'll, we'll come to it for sure. We'll come to it for sure. Um, for building blockchain, we need to use multiple stuff like hard hat, IPFS. Uh, exactly. So with Morales, you just write Morales. Dot, I, I can show you how Morales simplifies IPFS a lot. So here's a great example. Thanks for asking. But so let's say you have some kind of file. Maybe it's uh, a file that you have... Uh, input like you user inputted a file like file selector or maybe it's a some kind of json file or something i mean wherever it is whatever it is you just create the file like this you you call you call it something and then you insert the data and then you call save ipfs that's it you don't have to learn ipfs you just need to know that morales has a function called dot save ipfs that's it that's it that's how easy it is to use IPFS with Morales. Do you need to know what IPFS is? Not really, you just need to know there is decentralized file storage. And that's how, that's how Morales uh, simplifies it. Once again, workflow. What is the workflow for IPFS? The only workflow for IPFS should be dot save at IPFS. This is the whole workflow. So I feel that with IPFS, we've really succeeded on, on that. Because I mean, it's, uh, it's simple as, as a stone. I don't know how to say, like, what is simple? Simple as a, as a, I don't know. <laughs> it's, the, it's the simplest. Simple as a hedgehog, okay? Very simple. And this is how you do it in React. You have save file, bam, bam, bam. You import, and this is how you do it in vanilla. Bam, bam, bam. Very easy. So, yeah, the Morales IPFS workflow, it's the best I've ever seen, actually. Uh, can my users log in from... Venezuela. Well, it's up to you. If you allow them to log in from Venezuela, you can. I mean, at the end of the day, it's addresses on the blockchain. So if someone logs in with an address, it's up to you whether you want to verify something or, or not. And it may, it may be important for you to do if you have some compliance or not. Depends on your country. Depends on your use case. Um, I mean, for us, we don't, we don't uh, store any assets. You know, we don't, we're not a custodian. We're not some kind of financial institution. So that's why it's more up to you if you build an end use case where you have, for example, custody, probably you have to look into uh, the sanctions. You, you have to do it. If you are in the US or in Europe and there are sanctions against some countries, it's up to you to implement if you, if you are a custodian. But yeah, it's better you check with your lawyers exactly how this works in your particular jurisdiction, in your particular... When is Morales Metaverse course coming? Uh, I need to ask our uh, Kaizmi guys, Adam. Let me, by the way, I want to play this video for you guys. Let, let me see if this works. I hope this thing works now. Let me know. Did, did it work? Did, but did it start playing? I'm not sure. I don't know what's, what's the issue with our playback. Let's see. No, it didn't work. <laughs> we need to check what the hell is with our video stuff. Big question to Ivan. When is the next million dollar crypto? Oh, we're going to have another hackathon soon. We're going to have another one soon. I, I won't disclose a lot. Uh, but we're going to have a hackathon. So you better study as much Morales as possible. When? Oh, yeah. Th this one we did. No audio. Yeah, I know. I know. There is no audio. Do we really need decentralized file storage? Well, for something like NFTs, it's a good idea that is decentralized because people pay for immutable digital assets. So in that sense, it's a good idea. If you want to store some other thing, it may not be a good idea. It's really up to the use case. I mean, it's, it's uh, do we need, I don't know, do we need a nail? Well, if you don't want to hang up a picture on the wall or if you don't want to build some kind of house, you don't need a nail, okay? 
Do you need a hammer? I don't know, bro. If you want to hammer a nail, the hammer. You don't want to do it. You don't need. But that's the Do we need decentralized file storage? Depends on your use case. Maybe you need it. Maybe you don't need it. It's uh, it's up to your particular needs. And if you don't need it, you shouldn't use it. You shouldn't force decentralized file storage into it. Um, let's see. Morales REST API. As I, as I understand it, uh, yeah, David, it is usable in the client also. You can use it in the client. If you use Morales SDK, you can use it in the client without uh, any API key. You just use uh, like this Morales Web3 API and you don't need any API key if you use it in the client. And then you can say, set the rate limits in your cloud code, okay, the, for your users. Let, let me draw how it works. A good question. It's actually something that we need to clarify more in our documentation, but we've made our front end as, so we have our SDK, okay? So we have our SDK, Morales SDK. You can initialize it using Morales secret. If you initialize it, use it Morales secret, which you do only on the backend because Morales secret is, is of course secret. You only do it on the backend. So when you do this, then all of your Morales.web3 API requests, all of them are gonna go straight to our API. You're gonna be speaking directly to our API. So your SDK, you called a function like this in your SDK, then the SDK will just call the API because it has Morales secret, it can speak directly to the API. Now, if you don't initialize your SDK using the Morales secret, then when you call Morales.web3 API, sorry guys, I, I cannot write anymore. So Morales, so when you call Morales Web3 API in the in the in the case where your SDK is not initialized using Morales secret, which would be in the front end, where you cannot specify any secrets, of course. When you call Morales Web3 API, it doesn't go directly to the API. First, it goes to your Morales server, okay? In your Morales server, in the cloud functions, you can specify for each user, if the user is anonymous, how many times per second can they call the API? If they are authenticated, how many times per, mi per minute, sorry, can they call the API? So first it will go to Morales server and here, the rate limits will be checked for, for this particular IP that is calling and only then will it go to the API. But yeah, so this, so this works. This works with uh, backend like this. So of course, if you're using backend, you should specify Morali secret. So you get faster response times so it goes straight to the API. In the front end, the API also works, but it's gonna go via your Morali server for ra rate limit checks and then uh, it's gonna go to the API. But yes, I mean, the whole idea here was to make it very nice so you can use the front end without, yeah, without setting up anything. Uh, does that. What's the benefit of IPFS over something like BitTorrent? It's kind of exactly like BitTorrent in many ways. The difference is uh, the tech stack that IPFS is more for the web and BitTorrent is not for the web. Although maybe now it is, I think it's very similar, actually. Very similar in terms of the idea and, and things like that. Uh, okay, so now we've clarified the API question. Perfect, guys. On that note, we've discussed the main topic. We've discussed the weekly challenge. We've discussed the Q&A. Finally, we need next week's weekly challenge. And here's where, if you have any idea, now is your time to shine. If you have some idea for next week's weekly challenge, which is going to be about Morales and misfortune. This is for everyone who has bought the top. Uh, this is the next NFC we're giving away next week to the winner. Exactly, you have to specify server URL and app ID in the front end, Toby. It's not secret. You can go to docs, go to FAQ, you read this and you can it's not secret information 
Um, yeah, guys, what kind of a weekly challenge should we have? What is a Discord? <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, please explain to Bush, Bushman what is a Discord. Uh, go to moralis.io slash mage to join our Discord. You will understand. Um, well, one idea, we could do gaming, we could do Solana, we could do something with the integrations, or we could do something with building. I mean, I, we do have some nice pull requests coming from the community. For example, big shout out to Abinav for pushing components to Web3 UI kit. This is, of course, something that we want more and more of. Let's see his final styling is easy to do, but facing challenges. On So it could be building or it could be uh it could be something else next week music oh maybe something but see the problem with music is i cannot play it on on youtube or maybe i can play yeah maybe i can play it yeah music some, something with nfts or, or right the problem is that if someone is using some copyright stuff we don't want to play it here but also, we cannot really play it here. That's the thing. Uh, it could be something with music, yes. Maybe it can be something with streaming. There are interesting streaming protocols. It stacks time. How about app that uses Web3 API to show your transactions, NFT, uh, NFT transactions, and ERC20 transactions? Yeah, but we've had uh, this before. We've had this before, uh, David. Actant. We, ha we had them before. Like a portfolio tracker. I mean, soon, guys, we have 52 live streams. We, ha we had 52 challenges. But I think from next week, I will prepare the challenges more beforehand. So we, we don't have to brainstorm here together. They will have a challenge for you. But sometimes you guys also have nice ideas. Yeah, maybe something with the... Uh, with the uh, musics. I can show you an example to give you some inspiration. It's our Spotify tutorial. Spotify Web3. Build this Spotify clone. Where each each album is an NFT, and each uh, music is also an NFT. Each song is an NFT, and each album is an NFT. But yeah, let's do that. that that's a good idea, Toby. Let me, uh, let me write it. Next week's challenge. Something with music. Bam, bam, bam. Or video, or video. Let's, let's also make video, or video. Bam, let's do it. Let's do it, guys. Finally, you know that each and every week we're giving away merch. So if you go to the weekly challenge here in Discord, uh, Kreshimir will post a discount code for merch and you can get some sweet, sweet merch uh, on our merch store. For example, you can get a hoodie. One in pink, one in blue. There is React YouTube package. Ah, that's it. So guys, see you all next week, as always, next Wednesday. Oh, actually, I think I'm traveling next. Yeah, next Wednesday, I'm traveling. I'll try to make it. I think I'll make it. Uh, if not, it's going to be the, the week after. Let's stay in touch on Discord. But actually, I'm traveling next week. I try to make it work. I'll try to make it work. Guys, have a good day. Enjoy your day. Match the like. And I will see you 